evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome back to another episode of Tea Money Talks. I'm your host, Tolu, and on this weekly live series, what we do is we have real open conversations about money. So every single week, I have a special guest join me to talk about one important money topic or another, and today is definitely no different. I do have an amazing guest lined up to come on this live and have this conversation with me today. So actually, just wanted to let you guys know before I bring my special guest on that this is episode five of the season, and next week will actually be the finale for this season. So we're doing a six-part episode this season, and then we'll be back in 2022 with season number four so yeah with that being said I'm really really excited to introduce my guest for this evening so her name is Santa Zagaro and we're going to be talking all about the topic of debt she's a budget and mindset coach and on today's episode she's going to be coming on to kind of share her debt-free story with us it's a really inspirational one of how she was able to pay off over 15,000 euros worth of debt. I'm not sure what that is in pounds sterling. If you know, let me know in the comment section below. But I'm sure it's a lot when you even convert it to pounds because I believe the euro and the pound are quite close in terms of conversion rate. So yeah, really incredible story and how she was able to do that as a single mother. We're definitely going to learn a lot from today's live. So definitely get your questions ready. If you have any, leave them in the question box below. And without further ado, I am going to bring my amazing guest on this evening. So how are you guys all doing? How's everyone's week been so far? Let me know in the comment section below and let me see if this works. I think, yep, we should be going live. Three, two, one zero <laughs> okay that didn't quite work hi sophia good evening <laughs> thanks for joining okay there we go hi hey, you good we're getting the tea down oh good, good, good. yeah yeah can hear you loud and clear perfect perfect let's perfect go, yeah. let's do this yeah let's do this oh my gosh i'm so excited to finally get you on the live to have this conversation so i've been looking <laughs> forward to it all day literally rushing to finish work which is why i'm not ready but i said camera ready Mercy. Oh, sorry. It's a tog life out there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh, I don't know what just happened. The audio just went up, which is good. It just got louder, thank yeah, God. My yeah. audio is really low. I don't know why. Oh, no, maybe. But... Yeah, no, mine's gone louder now, which is great. So I can hear you loud and clear. Hopefully, Everything that doesn't again. Well. What's that? Okay. Hello. Brilliant. <laughs> okay, so before we jump into the conversation, obviously I've done a brief introduction, but it would be good for you to kind of, in your own words, tell the guys a little bit about yourself and a bit about what you do. Okay, so my name is Santa Sagaro. I'm based in Dublin, Ireland. I am a budget and mindset coach, and I kind of think this is my calling in some ways. Um, you know the saying, God never gives you work if he doesn't think that you can do it. And I feel now in hindsight with my whole journey of paying off 15,000 in debt in one year. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, it happened because it needed to happen for me. I needed to stop that cycle that I was in and maybe reconnect with who I really am. And I think I'm, I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life. And... I just want to share that with everybody else because I feel like it's a tonic. I have a secret, a superpower. Come on, get a little <laughs> bit of that, you know? Yeah, 100%. No, that's absolutely amazing and incredible. I, I didn't realize it was within a year. I was just going to ask you that in the live. So, wow. That's 51 brilliant. weeks. <laughs> that absolutely incredible. No, congratulations. But we're going to dive into your story in a lot of detail. But before we do that, what I like to do at the beginning of the live is kind of do a little bit of an icebreaker. So, it's a two truths and one lie. So basically, I'm going to tell you two truths and a lie. You have to guess what the lie is, and then you're going to do the same back to me. So I can let you think for a second while I'm doing my two truths and one lie. So this time I'll try to think of stuff a bit more outlandish. So, okay, so when I say outlandish, they're probably not that outlandish, to be fair. But number one, I was in a gospel choir growing up. Number two, I won £1,750 in the lottery. I did. Oh, no. <laughs> well, that's... that's, that's... <laughs> I may have. Yes, yeah, so that's number two. And number three is I am afraid of spiders. I think you're afraid of spiders. Don't. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. And it's two truths, isn't it? It's the next one now. Yeah, um, yeah. You won the lotto. I won the lotto. And no, I didn't. <laughs> so that was the lie. So the truth was actually that I was in a gospel choir. Even though I can't sing, but I was still there. <laughs> you were like the clapper. Like, oh, no, I was singing my heart. 
heart out just very badly. <laughs> like turn her mic down. You just go to the back. You're brilliant. Exactly. <laughs> the poor person in front of me, their poor ears were just getting it. So yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll do that then. I have a phobia of snakes. Oh lord, yeah. Um, I love I love bridges, crossing bridges, and I love hiking. Oh, oh. The snakes is the lie. <laughs> no. I was not. Oh, I was thinking, because <laughs> for me, that would have been true. But I was thinking, oh, because you mentioned snakes, maybe you're not scared of those and you just did that to oh, throw me. Anything else in the world, snakes is like the number one thing up there. <laughs> oh, crap. Okay, so that was the truth. Yeah. You you love hiking, I think. So then the lie yeah. is the Okay. I don't know. I think I did the opposite. <laughs> what? So, so what is the lie? What is. <laughs> So I like hiking, I don't like snakes, and I absolutely detest bridges. Okay, so, oh gosh, what was the, so what was the line there? <laughs> Weren't that all true? No, because I told you I like bridges. I like crossing oh, okay. bridges. Okay, you don't like bridges. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I don't know, I got all this. <laughs> bridges, that's such a specific thing to not like, bridges. Yeah. Um, Except like man-made, I don't like don't like driving over them. I don't like walking over them. And there's mm -hmm. a very famous bridge here in Dublin, the Hayton Bridge. Yeah, and I run across that bridge. <laughs> oh no way! It's on oh, no. not on. Doesn't matter. I'm running. Really? <laughs> wow, that's interesting. Okay, cool. So you got to know a little bit about you before we dive into the conversation. So no, thanks for being a good sport and for playing along. So just in terms of just to begin with, I guess, to kind of set the scene. That's what I like to do, kind of take the listeners on a journey. So find out a little bit more about your backstory before we then dive into the main heart of the conversation. So the first question that I have is just a bit of a backstory. So if you could tell us a little bit about your money story growing up, what your relationship was like with money, yeah, growing up from young, I guess, into adulthood. You know, I've been really diving into that um, yeah. the last few weeks. Um, I've been looking at my blueprint, as they call it, and um, I always tell people that money didn't matter to me as a child, but it really did. You know, like the more I go back, I grew up in Montserrat in the Caribbean, nice. and um, my mom, she was a single mother, and they say the first five years is what frames your whole life. You know, expect with relation with big important um, relationships and money is a big one there and i remember i was just diving back and i remember her making this dinner one day and she loved gardening i love gardening now but she loved gardening and i don't know if you call them dashin it was like dashin or yams you would call it okay. and i remember she went out and pulled up yams and she made the nicest soup i've never had a meal like that meal like, it was the nicest meal. There was no meat in it. There was nothing. And I remember bringing it, I brought it up to my mom, and she was like, that's because you were hungry. You were really, we were really struggling. And she had to go and literally get something from her, her garden to cook. And I just remember, like, oh, mom, you need to make that soup again. <laughs> She's like, oh, I'm sorry. You need to make that again. Wow. Like, <laughs> how did you make it like that? So when I look back, money was, wasn't was there. There was a scarcity there with mm -hmm. money. And, you know, there's loads of other stories. So my mom made it joyful with the things that she did. But, and she really focused on, you know, the mangoes on the trees and going to the beach and collecting almonds and and those are the things that I really gravitate to now. Mm. But it was hard. Yeah. It was tough. You know, there so was no benefits or welfare given to people there. You had to work or you don't work. Yeah. You know? Imagine. So then went to, went, how did you then become aware of the fact that there wasn't money? So I know the story you were just saying about the fact that 
like now as an adult you know that obviously back then your mum was struggling but as a child you wasn't that aware you just thought you know it's a really nice suit that mum's making so I guess when did the transition take place that you did become aware of your financial position in school school you know okay. yeah because in the Caribbean they look to America or the UK mm -hmm. um they do that in Africa I'd say as well if you have a cousin up in in England you know she's gonna send something down to you so um <laughs> Um, I had aunties and stuff up there and they would send barrels down, but like they wouldn't send it every time, like Christmas or, you know, something like that. Cause they were up there working as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and I remember like my mom didn't, we were, we played netball. Oh, snap. Didn't have any, <laughs> um, so I was center. Um, <laughs> um, position. Yes. Center. High five. Yeah. Um, so you played net, huh? Center or goal attack. I wasn't uh, tall enough, Shoot I don't think, but I was like, you couldn't catch me. Agile. <laughs> but um, I didn't have shoes. She got she had these shoes on. I didn't have runners, like, or trainers. She They were just, like, a hole in them, and she didn't have enough money to get me. Mm. And she gave me, I had these, like, black paint shoes, but the bottom of them was, like, rubber, so you could play. Uh -huh. And I didn't notice. I didn't care. But I was made to care. Yes. You know? They were pretty mean about it. Um, I could still remember it right now. And I was pretty much, your mom doesn't have money, huh? You can't afford shoes. And it was like, boom. Kids. I know. I'm, I'm poor. <laughs> I guess I'm poor. <laughs> okay. So um, I guess it makes sense with everything now. My whole money and my whole story with that makes sense now when I look back okay. to that. It, it just, of course, it's like, of you course, it's obvious now. Yeah, yeah, it's obvious the way I view money, you know. So, yeah, there's a few stories like that. And um, I do associate money with security. Yes. You know, um, but also, I think, I don't know, yeah, I do associate with security somewhat, but I'm very frivolous as well, what I was, you know. Yeah. No, totally. I, I could relate to that. I guess I had a similar background in that, yeah, because we didn't have so much money growing up. When I did finally get into the position to have money, that money came and went so, so easily kind of thing. So, yeah. You didn't have the education. Exactly. To deal with the money. That's exactly it. That was exactly what it was, yeah. So it's like, you know, the money's there, you spend <laughs> it. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm rich. Like, what else are we meant to do? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so... Okay, cool. So that's a bit about your backstory and what your relationship was like with money growing up. So thank you for sharing that, actually, taking us down memory lane. Yeah. I can imagine good to be out, to be honest. <laughs> that? Feels good to be out. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I can imagine. Gosh. So then, what? In, okay, we've kind of touched on that, I guess, in terms of how your background kind of impacted your relationship with money. I guess you had that money scarcity mentality for a while and then yeah. when you finally did enter into work well actually share a bit of your story if you don't mind actually from you being in the caribbean to then coming to the uk do you mind giving us a bit of that story yeah, so um i came over here when i was 10, 10. and okay. um it was like a fish out of water i was mm -hmm. so different from all the other kids around me you know i was like we were wild we used to be able to just go down to the river and go fishing you couldn't do that you were in like you know a built-up area yes. um that just wasn't happening so um it was that you know you spend money and buy things because of inferior because you feel inferior or superior so i felt very superior um inferior and for me, it was really important for me to have my first job, for me to fit in quickly, quickly, yeah. um, for me to kind of um, like level off my accent as much as I can, mm -hmm. for me to buy the same clothes, no more, no pre-mark, mom, what are you doing? You know, my mom was like a no person, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, yeah. those Caribbean moms, the Irish moms here, over here, they don't, you know, they love me. <laughs> The Caribbean mom was like, no, and she's gone about her business, and there's nothing that. <laughs> you you heard heard that, that yeah. <laughs> no. So, you know better than to go back and ask again. Yeah. Let it go. It, it's final. 
So um, I knew I had got a job on the milk round then. And oh, I just realized, yeah. huh? At what age did you get the milk round job? I think I was like 12. I could have been 12. So it was helping. There was loads of us. Yeah, there was loads of us working on the milk round. It was great fun. A bit of crack now. It was great fun. Um, like, wow. brilliant. Um, I used to get like a fiver or something. Um, and I realized I could make money. Mm. I was like, oh my God. And then someone would tip you. I was like, what? I'm going to have the best clothes now. I was like, and my mom was so proud in a way because I wasn't leaning on her at that yeah. young age. She was kind of going, wow, she's going to survive in this world. She's yeah. savvy. I told her no. She's like, mom, can I work on the milk cart, please? Oh, by the, well, way. the milk round wasn't in the morning. He literally go around on a Thursday and he would literally say, okay, five kids. And then we all just go in the back and just goof around and collect the money from the people that were getting their milk. Wow. Um, I loved it. Wait, was like what what years are we talking like was this the 90s 80s oh my god was it 90s yeah could have been the oh, late the late 90s yeah great um so, so um joe i remember him and all he's such a nice man like you know yeah um, then i got a job in a bingo hall and um i guess on all the jobs i kind of got got were cash handling as well so mm -hmm. People trusted you because you're, I think all that adds up, you know. People trust you because they know you're not going to, you're not seeing the money that way. I'm yeah. trustworthy. So I don't have that level of respect as well. You know, like, I don't know. Maybe I've, I've never been that person. So I don't know. I always just say, okay, this is not real money. So let's just deal with that. It's not for okay. me. And so when I did get it, it's not real money. You just spend it and that's it, you know. Okay. Um, yeah, so I've, I've always been a grafter. I've always worked. So that's it's never, it's never been the problem. I want it, I work for it, I get it. Easy. That's the way life was good. That's the way life is. It's yeah. I, I thought that would be enough. Yeah. Okay. So that's interesting then, because that leads me nicely into the next question, which is all about debt. So what would you say was your first experience of debt? Because like what you've just been saying, you you had money, you received it, and you would spend it, which is fine. It's not fine, but it, that, that was kind of the pattern that you followed at the time. So it's like the money came into your hands and you spent it. So then what then led you down the path of debt, I guess, or your first experience um, with debt? That would be interesting to hear. I got like uh, my first, this was like three jobs in. So it was like the bingo hall. <laughs> the milk and then I worked in a pub. Oh and I worked in the local shop as well. So it was four jobs. Oh. So when I was <laughs> when I was seventeen then I got a job in um Dunn stores. I don't know if you have it over there. So I was literally just a sales assistant. Um I didn't really work while I was there. Um <laughs> Say the name 15. of the store again, sorry. Um Dunn stores. I didn't really work but I, I showed up every time. Yeah. So I got a job there and um, I met these two girls and we just hit it off straight away. And they were, they were saying to me, oh, we're going on holidays. And I was like, I want to go on holidays. And then I was like, my mom's going to say no. Like my best friend, um, Olivia, her mom was like, no. My mom was like, okay, you're a responsible girl. You're working. I trust you. I was like, whoa, <laughs> I couldn't believe my look. I thought she was going to say no. So literally I asked her. I built up the courage to ask her in May. Yeah. And we were going in June. Oh. Yeah. And she said yes. Yeah, she was like, go on. Okay, I trust How you. How old were you at this time? 18? 17 going on to 18. Okay. And she trusted me. I can't, I can't, I don't even know what rock hit her. Because, <laughs> like, soon as we got back, I was still, I still had to come in at half nine at night. <laughs> wow. And from that to the freedom to travel alone. Wow, okay. I was I so I was like, I don't know how I'm gonna get get to this. So my friend was like, Do you have a credit union account? I said, Yeah, I use it for savings and I had maybe hundred euros something in it. She's like, You need to start putting money in there quick so you can get like a thousand euros so we can go because I had enough money for the flights with no spending money. And I went and got my first credit union loan at 17 and we've been in a relationship ever since. Yeah. My longest relationship. 
<laughs> oh my gosh but isn't that funny how it happens though it's like your first experience of debt it doesn't seem that big a deal it's just like oh i'm just getting this for my holiday and then that that will be it but yeah. it just starts up it starts you off on a downward spiral kind of thing because it's once you're in there it's it was just such a positive thing, thing. Was, yeah. yeah it was such a good thing it was good vibes attached with it <laughs> exactly. gave me the money i was like i love these people so i count in the mail i was like what count that money out give me that you know yeah, like, free yeah. Money. yeah the life oh my so god and just paid off it's easy yeah exactly okay but then obviously we saw that it wasn't easy because that was what 17 18 that's when you first experienced it that you took out about a thousand pounds or thousand euros sorry for the holiday and then i guess talk us through a little bit of anything else if you remember what the rest of the 15 ended up being on or oh and actually sorry to go back a step that 15 euros was that the the accumulation from the 17 age 17 to now that you acquired the 15 euros or was there a time when you paid some of it off and then ended up back there again do you know what uh, like they say a money personality so i'm a spender saver that's my money personality yeah. and um basically i would know <laughs> like i'd say okay now because my mom she would have been a spender when she did have the money she you know it's almost like making up for you know but my aunt in the Caribbean, she was a saver. She was probably a hoarder with the money, to be honest with you. And um, I grew up with her quite a bit as well. She helped my mom out. So there was bits. My mind was like, okay, we're going to have fun. But then we're going to save. And then we're going to blow it and have fun again. But then I'm going to show you if you can save it. But what happened was every time that I had fun and I got a loan out, it was more all the time. And then the emotional spending as well. I was buying stuff to fit in. But Ireland is a predominantly white country. Lovely. Yeah. They're a lovely country. But when you are, you feel like an alien, or a legal alien. Yeah. And, uh, you're trying to fit in constantly. You want, you want to be seen as just the same. Mm. And um, it's kind of like a little bit of, dare I say, self-hate. There's a little bit of that there. Yeah. And you, oh my uh, gosh, we've got a visitor. <laughs> so my youngest is just woken up. Go. One of my kids, Eliza, I'll be in now. Oh my god, sorry. God. God. Oh my gosh, my gate crashing. <laughs> okay, yeah, but look, this is our life for parents, their mothers. Listen. This is, this is to keep it real. It really is, yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He was sleeping. I think he must have had a bad dream or something. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I was, so yeah, I'd spend hard and then I would literally, um, do I want another one? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, sorry. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Be right. yeah. So I would literally spend hard, then save hard, because it was that battle of the guilt with me. Yes. But then I'd emotionally spend. When something happened, I worked in the bookmaker, so if I had a bad day, I would just spend. Mm -hmm. But then if I got um, a bonus, I would spend as well. I'd go home and say to my mom, okay, here's 200 euro. Go and make sure you look after yourself. You know, you want to be that. Well, I like them seeing me in a good light. I like them seeing me and for some reason I associated money with that. Yeah. Um I'm trying to think what happened then. Yeah, I got um that was it. I broke up with a boyfriend then and then I got an Audi A4 for twenty grand. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, like the fifteen grand was at the end of it. Like okay. when I look through the amount of loans I've gotten, it's in it's, it's a lot it's more than fifty. It's it's over a hundred grand at least. <gasps> oh yeah. wow! Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Fifteen, because I always worked. Yes. And I was a manager then, and Amen. I earned enough money to pay it back. And yes. That kind of struggle was like a habit. <laughs> like yeah. that time, seventeen. But that was just the norm. <laughs> when no, I first I started. <laughs> hello, beautiful. Oh God! Look. Hi. <laughs> you say hello. Beautiful. No? Okay. No. I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm taking your mummy away. Yeah. yeah, so the 15 was, that was the end of it then. Yeah. 
that was towards the end of that was the straw that broke the camel's back as they say which would have been my next question actually and that what made you finally say enough is enough so like you said you've been in that cycle for quite a while like, you know paying it off getting out more paying it off getting out more so what made this time the final time well i had my first trial louis and um i had a, i had a little bit of savings there my job they only paid um, maternity leave for half your time off and then the rest would be coming from the social welfare or usually yeah. call it benefits over there so um that would have been the other side of it but um yeah i that was grand and then i had eliza straight after okay I'll in a minute. okay <laughs> you're one starting now this is not comfortable you're gonna need to like get to your prisoners. bed prisoners prisoners to sleep on my lap but it's not working out for him <laughs> you're gonna go back to your bed <sighs> no you're gonna have to stay here quietly then okay mommy's on live yeah <laughs> sorry good she's good um yeah so then i don't even know where i was there I yeah was... sorry we were just talking about what, what 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 made this time the final time yeah. so i had eliza then and eliza was beautifully became but my savings were gone because i literally was a 13 month gap between the two of them yeah um so i had wow. that saving oh. yeah oh, back to back really if back it was back. a month earlier they would have been called irish twins that's what they yeah. call them if you have oh, is that what you two kids them? in one year yeah yeah <laughs> help us out. but um yeah i got them i got so by the time i was there i had 15 grand in debt and I was stressed because we're, the relationship was over. Mm. And I was there with two kids trying to pay a mortgage. And then it was just the reality of everything just sunk in. And I kind of felt just dark. You know, it was just dark everywhere. And it was that, that was like for a good year. I think 2018, um, we split. That was the final split then. And, um, I just everything just fell apart for me. That's that's the truth. Um, even going back there, I joined an MLM. I did everything because, like I told you, I was a worker. Yes. So I just thought if I did something, I'd be yeah, able to get, nice. I'd be able to get the money out and just pay it. Yeah. Um, at that point, I was twenty grand in debt actually, okay. um, and I didn't even know that. I only know it after. Because I was like, what did I actually pay off this year? You know, um, I didn't even know that because I had no idea of budgeting. I had no mm -hmm. idea of, I thought I did, but I didn't, you know. Yeah. The bills were coming and it was just like, you know, panic when you hear, when you go and check the mailbox. And I was like, please let it be a check or something in there. A tax <laughs> rebate or something, yeah. Yeah. And in the middle of that, still my pride, I ended up going on a hands to Marbella. In the middle of that, by like getting another loan. Yeah, I because did I don't same. want no one to think that I can't afford this trip. Yeah, I can't afford this. But I, I really did like it's not my scene. I really did not want to go, and it says a lot for environment as well because I felt like it was no choice. I had to go. Yes, you know, just crazy. It is insane when you think about it. I, know, I can so relate to what you're saying because I had two incidences during my debt-free journey when we were in a lot of debt and we still went on two holidays, family trips that we had to go on. But no, we didn't actually have to go because we didn't have the money at the time. But the pit, the family pressure, to be fair, nobody actually said you have to come. But it's one of those things where it's like, you have to come. So <laughs> we ended up, yeah, yeah, putting it all on the credit card and things like that. So yeah, I can totally relate to that. Like just top it up. I was just like to my best friend. I was like, "Can I get a loan?" And I was like to my dad, "Can I get a loan?" And I was like, "I'll give you this back." You know, I'm gonna be starting back work in July yeah. and everything. And then I came back and I started back work. And my God, I went for our busiest shop would be more money, which was you think that would be like good, but mm. I was busier. I was a new mom again. I had two young children at home. I had two minders to look after them. And um, basically, I was earning, just to give it back in. Right. Yep. Like just literally, so okay. nothing was really happening. I rented out the, uh, the spare bedroom for the first time. That was when I started. And um, 
it was a little bit um it's crazy mm. but she was cool she's still my friend now she's from america and that was where i kind of paid off a little bit of that like i caught up with my mortgage i was five grand behind so oh, i wow. caught up with that yeah um it was a lot um it was a lot and that was just the start you know yeah I'll come in in a minute. Only um, one minute. Give me one minute. Okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, it's all good. Um, oh, what's going on? Oh, my question has literally left my head. No, you were just saying more. Oh, okay, yeah, that you wasn't able, you almost weren't able to keep up with the payments and stuff. So then how were you able to, what was it? So we obviously we've understood what kind of made you think, okay, I need to sort this out. So how did you know how to kind of go about doing it? Because obviously, like we were talking about before, financial education wasn't something that we had or you had much of before prior to this kind of financial journey. So how did you embark on that journey kind of thing? Or, uh, what, pure what desperation. Yeah. Um, by the December of 2018, um, I was literally suicidal. Um, I think it was a... I think it was the pressure of being, you know, postnatal depression that was happening because, you know, they're fighting so hard to keep things perfect and they're not. And everything is unraveling no matter what way. I was having anxiety attacks, like, daily. Um, and I just felt really, really, really bad. Um, had everything organized. Um, and it was just my friend, Tammy. She caught me. She just wow. copped what was going on. Um, she just knew, you know. Wow. Incredible. And um, straight to the doctors, um, straight to the hospital because they just didn't want to leave me on my own. Mm. Um, it's, it's a different person now, looking back on that person. But um, it was a lot. You know, you break up with somebody as well and I don't really talk about him, but he, he, he put me through it as well, you know. There was a lot going on there, and um, I just couldn't cope anymore. And I just thought the, the biggest problem was me in the whole scenario. I was the one that caused everything. I was the one that got into debt. I should have known better. I was thinking back to me aunt and everything back then. You know, you start thinking, no, someone was giving me a warning. And you never listened and look where you are now and why did you buy all that stuff? You bought a car that you were comfortable to drive. You know? That yeah. was not you. You bought a car because you broke you finished the relationship and you wanted him to be looking that. successful. Yeah. Um and that's dangerous, you know? And um I just after going to the doctors and they were like, You need to pull back on it everything you are like we can't we, can't, we could understand yeah. why you're here too much pressure. Um, yeah it's too much pressure couldn't lose too much like i am a strong person i'd like to say when the time comes but that broke me that and i think that was kind of um just the bigger the bigger picture i was grieving my granddad passed that year He's the closest person I've ever been to really in my life. And he passed. And I just felt like I had no one that could really, that really understand me and get me. Mm -hmm. And it was that loneliness. You're a single mother. Louis, I need you to just put your, I don't know what I'm going to say. I need you to go in and just let me do, I'm working here. Okay? And a lot of people are hearing you crying right now. Oh. You go in. Cuddle the teddy, and then I'm going to come and give you a big cuddle. Okay? Okay? Okay, give me 30 minutes. I know, but give me another one. Sorry. Okay. In a minute. If you don't come back in, I'll be in. <laughs> How does he spoil five? Oh. <laughs> He's only a child. Forgive me. Yeah. Um, so that was really it and then I when I came back I just started sitting down and thinking and I was talking to like my mom no one really knew what was going on um they didn't know to that level what was going on you know 
proud. You don't want to tell anybody anything. Of course. Yeah. And I, I started Googling. I was on YouTube. Didn't see you there, but yeah. I was on YouTube. Like, back, yeah. Yeah, I was on YouTube and I found Death Kicking Mom. Say the name Death Kicking Mom. Do you remember her? She's like an American teacher. Um, no. She doesn't um, do it anymore, but she was doing oh, the okay. Dave Ramsey thing and she was paying off debts. I think they were like 74. You know, Americans, they're crazy yeah, yeah. like that over there. Yeah, yeah. So she was like 74 grand and I was just watching her and just taking it all in. I was like, next video, next video, next video, next video. I want to see more. What else is she doing? Um, people budget with me videos. What else are they doing? How are they doing that? What are they talking about? Let me go, who's Dave Ramsey? What's the app I need to get? I was literally on it. Like... Mm -hmm. um on instagram and uh, somebody mentioned death free community i was like what's death free community i wasn't even on instagram like that let me get on there and see what's going on who what like you know what's this death free community what what are they talking about yes and it was just that environment of knowing yeah. that people are in that same exact situation as you wow i was like i can do this yes. I don't, I'm, I'm gonna do this i don't care I'm never going to get myself back here again. I'm getting out of it. And that's that because the person I am now, it cannot come back to this ever again. Yes. Um, that was that was when I really just started. Absolutely. I, huh? That's absolutely incredible. Like, I'm just so inspired by what you're saying. Yeah, I just got literally hooked. And I could see, I see people now getting that bite, you know, and you realize that, wait a minute, there's a whole world out here. Yeah. That's why I, I'm very empathetic because there's so much I don't know. You yeah. know, there's so much that you just don't know what's out there. Yeah. Or when so you might need what's out there. So um I just started doing the baby steps really. Um and then I just non stop, I just budgeted, budgeted, budgeted. Um I think uh, I did uh the budget mom, I bought her planner. I think when it launched I got that. Um, and I liked it, but I was just like, I need to simplify this for myself. I just want it more simple. I want to sit here, do my budget and go. Yeah. I just have it that, um, that whole thing. Um, like, you know, I have my own planner now, but I brought, that, that's when I started literally going, okay, what are my priorities here? Like, what is the most important thing? What would make me not have a panic attack? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Dave Ramsey was talking about the four walls. So I was like, okay, I'll give them the wall family. And everything can go in there. And then I was like, okay, what's next then? You know, I'm going to yeah. another family because the reason why I said families was because of my family. I was doing this. That was me. Why? Yeah. Because I wanted, I didn't want my children with the lack of education to ever end up where I am. Yeah. Because I could have been rich, you know. <laughs> I'm spending that money like I'm getting loans and yes. to impress others and you know just not minding my money and and now in hindsight I know that I was almost groomed in the environment that I grew up in to be that person with money mm -hmm. it was always going to happen unless something or somebody else came in and influenced me early yeah. on this was always going to happen. And a lot of people, that's what I tell them now. You can't blame yourself to a certain point because you are, this is almost inevitable. Yeah. Exactly. Unless you learn. And that's why I think schools should really take this on and let the, just talk about money. But sure, if you look at our governments, and I'm not getting political, <laughs> they're in so much debt. How are they going to pass? What's the message they're passing? What are they teaching them? What? Yeah. No. No, totally. Anyway, I did the baby steps, and and then I just got hooked. I got hooked. I did the snowball method where I paid off my smallest yeah. debt, you know. Yes. And then it was rolling up, and I just got hooked. The first payment, I was able to give my friend, you know, like six hundred euro that I owed her. Um, I got taxed back. I was like literally looking at things differently. You know, yeah, my mindset was changing. I was like, you get taxed back. Well, because I didn't earn that much money the year before. I could get, okay. Normally, I would have gone down and go, okay, I'm going to treat the kids with something nice. 
we're gonna get treated to something nice you know well it wasn't i got the tax back and i literally um gave my friend back money and that was my emergency phone started amazing brilliant um brilliant because of the I don't know. It was brilliant because I just felt very in control. In control. That was the thing. Mm. In control. Enthusiastic about money for once in my life. Mm. And just felt like, oh wow, maybe if I can do this. Because you know when you have that emergency fund, when I had that thousand, I was like, I'm not just saving a thousand euro. Yeah. Oh my God. It's a game changer. What else do I need to do? Yeah. <laughs> You know, that was like in February. I had a thousand euro because I was focused. Focused on it, yeah. yeah. Then I was selling things as well. I was like, the rocking chair has to go. Yeah. <laughs> what else did I find? The boogie we don't need. We don't need, like, you know, five. You can walk now. You're big enough. <laughs> yeah. These old baby clothes, they have to go. Everything was going. Sell, sell, sell. And the money, instead of it being a treat, the money was going towards it had a purpose yeah yeah no that's absolutely amazing and i hope yeah i can see all the love hearts so yeah keep them coming thank you guys because it's so inspirational what you're saying and i think it's there's so much lessons that can be taken from all of what you just said actually in that just by ch changing your mind and changing your approach was able to literally transform your financial position because income wise other than you maybe doing a reselling and things like that it was still the same salary but you've now taken it nothing went up. what was that it was, nothing went up it wasn't no crazy yeah, income exactly. coming in it was just literally me going and then i had me thinking yes lady no <laughs> your one minute's up well, literally, you need to give louis a hug you can't be fighting like that 13 months apart can I just do this first and then I come into you? Okay, you go on in and lie down and get a good little snuggle, okay? Okay. <laughs> I love to talk. I usually whisper. Oh, hashtag mom life, yeah. <laughs> we'll get there, we'll get there. We're doing well. I think we're not much left, to be honest. So, yeah. Oh, gosh, I didn't realize the time. Sorry, I'm enjoying myself too much. Okay, let me. Um, um, with through the last couple of questions then so what would you say is the biggest lesson that you've learned on your financial journey or on this debt free journey it could be one two or three um i would say the biggest thing that i've learned well is i can be a beast if i want to but i have to just literally set my mind to it and start making excuses yeah um, in the sense where stop looking for for the answers in the wrong places, Definitely. you know, um, be a little bit more fearless in things that you want to do, because if you have a purpose, if you know, like if I know, if Carol would have never created a planner, would have never been on radio, been on you know any of them things, like mm -hmm. would have left her job, like Santa oh, wow. would have never mm -hmm. have done anything like that. But because I was paying off my debts, I just had more faith in myself. And it's been the case ever since. Um, so I'd say the biggest lesson that I've learned is you just have to trust your own gut and trust your instinct. And the answers are out there, but you have to believe that you're resourceful. You have to believe that you have it in you to go and look and do the groundwork and do the hard work for it. I love that and yeah that she said it so well and it's so true i think that's what one of the things that really help you on a debt-free journey or is the power that it gives you so it's like wow if i can do this what else can i do like wow i'm capable of so much more than i think yeah and i say honestly because i was like oh my god i'm in beast mode what is going on here who is this i was like so empowered <laughs> no it's incredible it's absolutely incredible and i love that even well i guess we'll go on and talk about that towards the end actually in terms of you starting your platform and the work that you do with others but i think it is incredible the fact that you've paid off all of that debt and you know you've set yourself up financially for yourself and for your children but you're now like no i'm not just going to keep this to myself i'm going to take what i know and i'm going to help as many other families as i can so i think that's pretty incredible and, doing that. Like, i know you're doing that as well everybody should be doing it yeah 
When you Each learn one. something, you pass it on. You know? Exactly. I mean, most of it I pass on for free. Mm. You know? Like most of it, it's on my page. I yeah. give so much away. Yeah. Do if you want it. Exactly. No, I think it's amazing. I wish pages like yours and mine existed when I was on my debt free journey. So I didn't find a debt free community on all of those things until after I became debt free and I wanted to start sharing my story. Then I realized, oh, wow, there's people out there that share this kind of stuff online. It's like, oh, man, I could have done with this like a year ago, but I didn't know it existed. I think they really helped me. But in Ireland, the debt free community is very young. Okay, really? When I started, it was like six accounts. No way. Uh, so I was literally looking at the UK debt free communities and America yeah. and Australia and New Zealand. A lot of them I was looking at and just getting yeah, pumped yeah. when they were paying off their debt. Oh, that's a um, point. What's your hashtag? Is there a hashtag for Ireland? Yeah, um, the Irish debt free community. It's at the ground, like the difference now. Okay. There's, there's businesses, there's moguls now, you know, like it's crazy. Oh, no way. Um, that's so good. That's, I mean, it shows that there's a need for it. Like there's definitely a need 100 percent, 100 percent. because even just over the last what two three years since starting my platform so many pages have come up and there's so many people doing amazing work but if i speak to a few friends i'm like oh have you heard of this person or that person and they, they don't know any of these people i'm like oh my gosh there's still so much more work to be done to keep educating people on the resources no, no, far away from it we think it is yeah because we're in the bubble we're in the bubble exactly yeah it's not no no yeah yeah. Oh, oh, I didn't even look at any of the comments actually. So let me go back. Just literally, just been talking away all this time. Sorry, guys. Uh, hold on. What's going on? Every time I come on it, they change up the format on. Um, and oh, well, there's nothing new there. Yeah. Sorry, I can only see the most recent comment from my budget in life. Just got to go pick, put the kids to bed. But great live. <laughs> ah, that's a good oh. one there, Natasha. Okay, no, thanks, thanks, Natasha, for tuning in. You can obviously catch the replay later anyway. But I think we're rounding up now, to be honest. Let me just ask you one more question because I'm conscious of the time and I, I don't want a little one to be like, this lady's keeping my mummy away. So, yeah. One minute. I'm just hoping doesn't know what a minute is, you know? <laughs> I, know. I know. You've been saying one minute for the past one hour. Bless him. <laughs> okay cool so then i guess just the last question then is about okay two more questions actually so second to last one, question hit me. yeah okay so this one was quickly just in terms of we talked about you know the um lessons and stuff you learned and i just wanted to know what you would say was the what has been the best part of the debt free journey the empowerment and meeting like-minded people mm -hmm. um oh, wait, my sorry. circle has so changed now. yeah it's really my whole circle has changed um just meeting some really cool people that i would have never met in my whole life yeah and um i just you can't you have to be grateful for that because when your circle before was you trying to impress people yeah now the, the circle is now people go go do it go do it exactly. well done you you know yeah. it's brilliant no, totally. I, I, just, I would say ditto for that as well. I'd say that's probably been one of the best things for me, joining this community online. Is, yeah, the amount of connections I've made with such incredible people. Like I would have never met someone like yourself before um, just joining this community. So definitely, definitely, I would agree with that. And then I guess just the last bit then would just be advice that you would give to anyone that is on a, wants to embark on a debt-free journey or is struggling with debt and wants to get started. Yeah, any advice that you would give to them to get started? The advice that I would always give to somebody that started is be prepared to know that it's not going to be like, it doesn't go like my journey didn't go like this. Ah, mm -hmm. beautiful. Just know that there's going to be bumps where you need to keep your discipline and just yeah. stick with it. Just trust yourself in the process. Um, budget, your financial well-being is a real thing, you know. We all talk about well-being and you have to sleep right and everything, but you can't sleep if you're worrying about money. Mm. So try and understand your relationship, just like the first few questions that you've asked me. Yes. Try and understand your relationship with money. Try and understand where that comes from. Try and connect the dots as best as you can. And don't blame yourself. Like, we all make mistakes as well. Um, and budget. And buy my planner if you ever want to. Yes, budget. Oh my gosh, to have a budget is really important. Give your money a job every time. 
Hundred percent. Yeah, I can't, I can't shout it enough. I'm always screaming about budgets, guys, because if you don't have a budget, then it's going to be very hard to kind of achieve those financial goals. So definitely be intentional with that money, make a plan, and just yeah, make that plan and work the plan. And like you said, it's not going to be a straight smooth sailing. It's going to have ups and downs. It's going to be challenging, but it's worth it on when you get to the other side. Like it's just worth it. All the sacrifice is all going to be worth it. Like those short term. Such a relief because. Sometimes I get a little bit knocked and then I know I just go and look at my budget and go, okay. And it's changed the way I look at money, everything, you know, in the most positive mindset. I just know that money will always be there for me, but I can do so much when I get money. But before I used to think that it was something that, oh God, couldn't have, I couldn't be that person with too much money or I couldn't be that person flashing but now I get to take great, great pre um, pleasure in going, I can give to charity because that's where my values are. And I can now use that money to do something really to good. To do so much with it, yeah. Um, so much with it. Like, and that's where it's really had a change in my mindset. Um, I actually, I was actually given out to the other day um, because I would more give, I'd give so much away for free, but people are like, come on now. <laughs> You're going to be a book. I'm so, I just see money as such a joyful thing now yes. that it's a beautiful thing. And I'm so happy that I, to be honest with you, I'm looking at doing psychology next year oh, um, because I'm so fascinated with that. I think a budget and everything is one thing, but I think it's the way your mind, psychology uh, that, that really fascinates me. That's um, an actually a great book. Have you read it? The Psychology of Money. It's a really, really good book. I haven't. Check it out. It's a really good book. It came out, I think, earlier this year. It's really, really, really good. It talks all oh, about... That'll, that'll be on my... Um, yeah. I'm reading really Happy Money right now. Yeah. Um, Ken Bonner. You say you're reading really Happy Money? Happy oh. Money, yeah. I haven't heard of that one. He's like, like the, he's like a guru from Japan. I kind of like everything they do over there, to be honest. I did there. I've done something for him. So if I, I did their budget book. They they have one Kakibo. Okay. And like Yeah, in Japan they literally like, you know, give them money, you play like you know, everything's so orderly. I like that. Yeah. Um, but um Ken Honda, he um he's my new obsession right now. Because he kind of does psychology and I love that. But definitely psychology of money. That, yeah, I can't remember the name of the author. But yeah, that's the yeah. name of the book. I'll message it to you after the live anyway. Yeah. And you can message me this author that you, you're talking about as well. I'll check that book out. Yeah. Then. And yeah. that's another thing. Educate yourself. Yes. You still, I, just, I just love it. Yes. Same. Immerse yourself in it. So I've got my reading list that I'm doing for this year so I can add that one for 2022's reading list because I'm, yeah, trying to compile books. You should books. definitely add that on and even put on your page so we all see it. Yeah, because, uh, I definitely will. I can't get enough books. That's, that's my biggest investment in myself, to be honest. Yes. Is self-development. And it's, it's the best investment to make, to be honest, because, yeah, the more you learn, the more you can help other yeah. people and grow yourself. So, no, definitely self-education is a must. So I guess the last question, I said that was the last question before, but this is the last, last one. <laughs> so the, the book that you just mentioned is great. Is there any other resources or anything that you would recommend to people listening? Um, I would always say, I don't know what, we have like citizens information, we have maps as well. There's government organisations that can help you. Amazing. You really need that. I'm, I didn't really, I wasn't aware of them. Yeah. But I think that I kind of needed to do it myself because I've learned all the hard lessons myself as well. But they are there for people who need that step up, you yes. know. And um, I'd say for resources, go on YouTube, follow pages like yourself. Get yourself um, ingrained. Make sure your environment, change your environment. Right, and I know it's harsh and you might think, but it's, it's yeah, I'm coming now. I'm literally coming now. Um, oh. Create boundaries around yourself. I'm very much into that. I'm very much into, I could talk to you, but if you're coming with the wrong energy, you probably won't hear from me after that. Yeah. And it's okay, but I just don't have any time for that. I'm doing something, I feel like I have a mission. Yes. Like you see on my page, I'm like, I'm going to help one million families. Yes, and, I love that. Um, and that's the end of that, you know. And that was a dream, to be honest with you. A lot of things I've been seeing in dreams, and I just, I just wake up and follow through. Yeah. So I was like, I'm gonna help one million families, and that's that. 
And, and another thing is for my kids, you know, I've battled with racism and stuff. And I, I, I want, if I was to die, I want to leave a legacy where they could see no matter what mommy went through or what, what way mommy thought, look what she left. Mm. And so anything is possible. That's my biggest thing. Amazing. Okay. Okay, boss. <laughs> on that note then oh my god Santis you've been absolutely amazing thank you very much thank you so much for tuning in and thank you guys for um, sticking around for this whole life it's been absolutely amazing you've been yeah fantastic I'll let you get off and go see to the little ones now bless you but no thank you it's been really really great having you on the live have a lovely evening everybody thanks for tuning in and yeah we'll speak yeah, to look you smiling you know <laughs> Oh no, I've got all the get oh no. <laughs> my lipstick. <laughs> oh so gorgeous. Hey Bobby. <laughs> oh what a yeah, bye. 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 <laughs> bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye guys.